in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Wick's theorem. Specifically, I'm going to talk about what problem it solves in quantum field theory. I'm going to talk about how it varies a little bit depending on what fields you're dealing with. And then I'm going to go through the complete derivation of it with scalar bosons. And then at the end, I'll show you what the answer is for fermions. All the other introductory details are in the introduction section, so let's just jump straight into the math section from here. In quantum field theory, it is a bit of a lengthy process to go from the classical action of a given quantum field theory to actual physical predictions like scattering cross-sections and decay rates. There are two commonly used ways. The first is the operator method, and the second is the path integral method, which basically just differ in how the scattering matrix is computed. Beyond the scattering matrix computation, the procedure is the same. In my quantum field theory lecture, series, link to that playlist in the description, I have so far shown the operator method. If you have been watching my quantum field theory lecture series, then you know that one computes scattering matrix elements by evaluating matrix elements of this operator, the scattering operator, or S operator, which consists of a time-ordered exponential. There's a link to the derivation of this operator in the description as well. There are two primary challenges with evaluating this. The first, the fact that it can be hard to work with potentially heavily populated states, was addressed in in my LSE reduction video, where we reduce the problem to vacuum matrix elements, and I'll also put a link to that video in the description. And the second is the fact that time-ordered products are difficult to work with. That's what we'll be addressing in this video. When one Taylor expands the S operator within the matrix element, in the course of doing perturbative QED, one arrives at an infinite series of matrix elements of time-ordered products, which would be much easier to deal with if there were some way to express them in terms of, say, normal-ordered products. An example of expanding the S matrix like this and encountering this problem can be found in my video on deriving the Feynman rules for QED, which is soon after this in my quantum field theory lecture series, and I do apply Wick's theorem to solve that problem there. Thankfully, there is a theorem in quantum field theory that explains exactly how to do this, called Wick's theorem. To state it directly, Wick's theorem shows how to express time-ordered products of quantum fields in terms of normal-ordered products of the same fields, and a shit ton of two-point Green's functions, especially when you're dealing with a time-ordered product of a lot of fields, the exact form of Wick's theorem varies slightly depending on which kind of quantum fields one is reordering. The biggest difference exists between bosonic and fermionic cases where the generalization from one to the other isn't completely obvious, but still the derivation for fermions isn't very different from that for bosons. One really just switches from commutation relations to anti-commutation relations and follows through the computation normally. Other than this, generalizing is rather straightforward, particularly adding or removing indices doesn't change much. Given this, for now, I will stick to proving Wick's theorem for massive scalar bosons, and then just provide the fermion case at the end. Now the massive part there isn't so important, I just put that there by habit. In future videos, I may potentially explicitly do the fermion case. Beyond this, there is more than one way to prove Wick's theorem. I have selected one way for this video, and may potentially demonstrate others in future videos, as I feel like doing so. In this video, the approach that I have chosen for deriving Wick's theorem is to rewrite the S operator in terms of normal ordered products and two-point Green's functions so that when both sides of the resulting equality are Taylor expanded, one can extract Wick's theorem by equating the coefficients of like order. The first step in deriving Wick's theorem this way is to discretize the S operator. This will afford some necessary reconfiguring of the operator, so simply discretizing it gets us straight to here. I introduced a limit for the integration bounds just to make that process easier. Because the commutators of the operators and the exponent are C numbers, we have this relation. Remember, we would normally have an infinite series of commutators of commutators in the exponent beyond what is present right there, but because the fields satisfy canonical commutation relations, their commutators are commuting C numbers even though the fields don't directly commute themselves. This causes the infinity of extra terms to vanish. If we combine this with the fact that a time-ordered commutator vanishes, we can rewrite the discretized time-ordered exponential like this. We can then use the same relation backwards to partially recombine the exponentials. Specifically, because the commutators of operators in the exponent are C numbers, we have this relationship, this backwards one. Applying this allows us to rewrite it like this. With this reconfiguring done, we can take the continuum limit, and we arrive at this integral right here, where this theta function that shows up right there is necessary when converting back to the integral, because it enforces this condition from the sum there in the case of continuum. The reason why this reconfiguration of the S 
operator is useful is simply that it happens to enable us to express the S operator in terms of normal ordered products and two-point Green's functions, which is the main goal that I stated at the beginning of this section as being key for this proof of Wick's theorem. So really, this is just one of those times in physics where the first steps you take are taken because people who have done this before you happen to know that that works just from trying it. To proceed from here, we must leave some generality behind. This is where this derivation becomes specific to bosons. I said that we would be deriving the boson case, that I would state the fermion result at the end, and that Wick's theorem and its derivation doesn't really change much when indices are added or subtracted, so we may as well deal with the simple and familiar case of scalar bosons. All we need from scalar boson theory is this, this interacting Hamiltonian, and that the scalar quantum field can be split into creation and annihilation parts like this. Specifically, we care to apply this to the first factor in the S operator, which we will now manipulate separately for a few steps. So going back up here to the S operator, this is what we're going to be working with. I've just brought that down here and then made the spatial integral explicit by pulling it out of the Hamiltonian. Sticking those two relations there in gets us to this. Then we can apply this relation again to arrive at this expression for that exponential factor. And here's where it really starts to get interesting because we see that these two factors are normal ordered allowing us to rewrite this like this. And now we're starting to see normal ordering showing up in all this, and that's very exciting because, of course, that's what we're going for. Inserting this back into the S operator allows us to arrive here. We can then insert this formula for the interacting Hamiltonian, which we've already taken advantage of, into this factor there so that then we can rewrite it like that. Because the field commutators present in the last two exponentials are C numbers, those exponentials can be combined, so this one and this one, leaving us with this. Those commutators being C numbers also means that they are equal to their own vacuum expectation values, so we can replace them with their own vacuum expectation values in the integral. We haven't changed its value, of course, but we have gotten it a step closer to where we're trying to go. The last task in rewriting the S operator in terms of normal ordered products and two-point Green's functions is to re-express the current vacuum expectation value as the vacuum expectation value of the time-ordered product of two scalar quantum fields, i.e. we want to prove that it is equal to the two-point Green's function, meaning we want to prove this relationship here. Once this is done, we will be free to tailor expand and extract Wick's theorem. To prove this relation, first consider the following commutator vacuum expectation value. If we start out with this and then simply write out the commutator and distribute the states, then we get to here. The first term is zero because annihilation operators zero the vacuum state, leaving us with this. However, because we have this relationship and this relationship also because annihilation operators zero the vacuum state, we can substitute in the complete fields without destroying the equality into this term right there, leaving us with that relation. So then we can substitute this result back into that quantity we were originally trying to simplify right there, and that gets us to this. Then given the form of the step function, we can, by distributing and regrouping, rewrite our last result in this way. Now basically we're writing out this commutator and then multiplying this through and then refactoring and simplifying, given the properties of the step function, which gets us to here straightforwardly, and this is just a time-ordered product, so we have our final relation. I've stated it down here, then we can plug that into the S operator, and we have finally finished re-expressing the S operator, which is a time-ordered exponential, in terms of only normal-ordered products and two-point Green's functions. So, then we can tailor expand both sides of that, which looks like this, and then we can equate the coefficients on terms of like order and extract Wick's theorem, the first non trivial terms give us this. Then if we do that generally, for even terms, we arrive at that result, and for odd terms, we arrive at this one. Then, at the beginning of the video, of course, I said I would show you the fermion result. This is the fermion case for an even number of fields, and this is the fermion case for an odd number of fields, and that's about it. That completes our task. We now have a basic understanding of Wick's theorem. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it proved useful and educational. If it did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. Additionally, if you liked this kind of content, then you could consider checking out my Quantum Field Theory Lecture Series playlist where I have videos that teach a variety of different topics in Quantum Field Theory. Dietrich out.